you know, you don't know who they are. You don't actively see them. And it's, it's a challenge. We're all dealing with, as I said, you know, military. Some of us still serve and then family life and then school. And so juggling all of that, it, it's hard to try to find the time to, um, to devote to campus life. My name is Jasmine McCray. I am 26 and I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. This is Brooks Herring. I'm 29 and I'm from Conway, South Carolina. James Hall. Um, I'm 36 from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania originally. Billy Andrews. I'm 24 and I'm from Northwest Indiana. My name is Ashley Bunnell. I'm a social work major. Um, it's my first year at USC and I'm classified as a junior. It's Interesting, that's for sure. Um, it's, it's completely different than anything I've ever experienced. I have to take, um, I'm taking all the core classes. Um, so a lot of them are freshman level classes. And one thing I have heard over and over and over again is, you guys remember this from high school. And I'm class of 2004, so I don't remember a lot of things from high school, so just trying to um, dig deep into my brain and, and pull out some of that old, you know, algebra or uh, chemistry or whatever else, you know, that I learned years ago and uh, try and keep up with everybody who just learned it last year. Yeah, I'm 100% I'm disabled, uh, so it takes me, you know, from one class to another. It takes me 35, 40 minutes to get from the capstone building to the call scene where my next class is, uh, I'm usually late because I only get 20 minutes, so. Transferability of credits, um, getting information when you're looking into schools to see what's the best fit for you, um, especially veterans, spouses who are you know still married to someone active duty and still moving around. It is very difficult to call up a college, especially USC, my experience here, and say, hey, could someone look at my transcript, let me know what you guys will take so I can have better academic planning at the school I'm at because I'd really like to transfer there in the future. That doesn't happen so easily. So what are you guys looking at achieving through SPA? Um, we have uh, decided to uh, revamp and, and take a pulse of the membership and see what they actually need with some of your issues, with some of the good things that are going on on campus uh, in regards to vets or non-vets that are just part of the group. Who all is a is an, a veteran who's served at a DD-214? Not the, so it's a four, five, six. Have any of you guys received credit for your military service on your transcript? Thanks. What's that? Yeah, like all my stuff shows up on my transcript, but I didn't get any credits for yeah. All mine shows up on there, but no credits were awarded. No credit hours or no quality points? No credit hours for a word. One thing would be to allow the vets and disabled vets to have a veteran advise them on their degree path. Um, look at uh, their smart transcript or the courses that they've done in the military. Most of the time those classes or courses are ACE accredited. Um, so I was only able to get uh, 25 cre credits for over 100 courses, or 100 credit hours. Um, so we need to uh, advocate to, for us to get more, more credits. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing, I believe. So that is an issue I think a lot of schools are facing because a lot of the credits that somebody might get when they're in the military, there's just not a good counterpoint in what USC can offer. Um, if we can do it, we will really try, especially if they're bringing in credits from like other community colleges, other accredited institutions, usually we can find a counterpoint for a USC class. Um, but if they got credit in like airplane refueling while they were in the military, there's just nothing like that at Carolina that we can give them credit for. You come back, we Someone said, you leave a boy, you come back a man. And, you know, it was just, it was a great time, but a terrible time at the same time. I 
definitely, especially in the role that I'm in now as an officer and I have soldiers under me, um, definitely try to mentor other females um, in the military and just forming that bond and that connection with each other to build each other up and, and push each other, um, I think is important, so. I have no problem jumping in, helping people. Um, I don't know, I, I would say, I would say discipline's the biggest, biggest thing, discipline, motivation, just, you know, knowing what I'm here for and, you know, knowing what I need to accomplish and just focusing on that and, and uh, not so much you know, what party's going on tonight or whatever else. I was so worried about it that the transition was going to be so hard and that getting back into school, I thought I was going to be, you know, the dumbest guy in class. I didn't remember anything. And it turned out not to be that at all. And so it's just once I realized that, you know, I, I didn't think it was hard at all. I thought school was a breeze. Our student success center so this is kind of the one-stop shop um, for any kind of academic support or just help with getting to the university um, that we have here and one of our populations that we work a lot with is our student veterans um, so we're really excited if we're able to get the Home Depot grant and everything goes as it should um, we will be putting um, our veterans lounge right here in this area we're hoping to knock down this wall right here um, so we can kind of extend this make this a bigger space Fill it with you know couches, TVs, um, micro fridge, just a nice area for student veterans to kind of sit and meet with each other, have lunch, study. Um, they'll be really close to all the academic support services at the Student Success Center, um, and we're really excited about that project. You have uh, the traditional student who lives on campus, and so they have dorms, they have places that they can go to to meet and things like that. I mean, of course, we have the Russell House, we have Thomas Cooper Library, but there's no place really outside of those um, public forums where we can kind of all go and talk and be together. I kind of walk around campus and I feel out of my element knowing there's a place they can break in between classes because a lot of us commute and not having to go you know find the one outlet in the commuter lounge <laughs> would be really beneficial to have that space where you can just relax and be comfortable and be with people that, that know what you're doing and know you know where you've been. So I think by bringing this lounge to the campus, it provides a common ground that people can come together who already have an unknown bond, but they can just bring it to the forefront and say, hey, I'm, I'm Billy, and write out, you know, friendship and grow from there. I never, never saw myself being here. It was never part of the plan. I, I, when I was in the military, it was, I planned on retiring in uniform or dying in uniform. As far as I was concerned, you know, this is who I am. This is, this is what I do. This is who I'll always be. My brother, who's medically retired from the Army, told me about voc rehab. He went to school to be a diesel mechanic. You know? That's what he loves doing. And so I went to go check into it, and, you know, I took all the tests, and lo and behold, they re recommended that I be, you know, in the medical field, you know, physical therapy. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I can get on board with that. And, and then they said, well, you know, we, we'll send you to USC to go to orientation last year to, to get that Carolina card and to hold that in my hand. And, and for my face and my name to be on it, just, it, it's, I can't even describe the feeling. And at the same time to think of those guys who, who aren't coming back, who can't take that opportunity, who will never be able to go to school in their home state. And thinking, you know, I can't fuck this up.